Only one creature has carved a life for itself in every habitat on Earth. That creature is us. All over the world, we still use our ingenuity to survive in the wild places, far from the city lights, face to face with raw nature. This is the human planet. Mountains are among the most brutal environments on Earth. Weather here can shift from tropical to arctic in just hours. And the higher you climb, the tougher it gets. Until even oxygen is stripped away. But millions of people live in the mountains. Either seeking refuge from conflict or exploiting resources found nowhere else. And to survive, they have had to adapt in the most surprising and ingenious ways. These are their stories. Altai Mountains in Mongolia are among the most remote on Earth. And for the people who live in this barren landscape, hunting is nearly impossible. Unless you have help. Silao Jadik and his son Beric are Kazakhs. And today, they're in search of the ultimate hunting partner. A golden eagle. Son kran bolsa, Altay'da alınma etin anı yok. Diğer betinde bir kütten kran kuzu yok. These young birds are almost ready to leave the nest. If 16-year-old Beric can collect one, he will take his first step towards becoming a Kazakh hunter like his father. It's a big first step. Ever since the Kazakhs fled into these mountains nearly 200 years ago, they have been stealing baby eagles. Eagles have eyes many times more powerful than the humans and can spot prey two kilometers away. If Beric can teach this eagle to hunt for him, he will join the few hundred Kazakhs left who can still do this.
Beric calls his new eagle Balapan. If he gets it right, Balapan will become his hunting partner. But training her will take five months. It's five months later, and time for Beric and a fully grown Balapan to go on their first hunt together. They're after a Mongolian fox, an animal so elusive, only an eagle stands a chance of catching it. But for Balapan to catch the fox, Beric first has to take her to high ground. Here, she'll have the perfect vantage point to spot the slightest movement. Beric now hopes that Balapan's hunting instinct will take over. Balapan has failed. For Beric, this is worrying. Does she have the killer instinct? Traditionally, Kazakh hunters pair up with their eagles for seven years before setting them free. But Beric now has his doubts. As day breaks, father and son return to the mountains. If Balapan can't catch a fox, Beric may have to let her go and find another eagle to train. Balapan has caught the fox, just as she was trained to. 
She's now locked in a fight to the death. Silao kills the fox as quickly as he can. According to Kazakh tradition, Balapan gets the fox's lungs. The fox's thick coat will be used for winter clothing. Beric has proved himself to be a successful Kazakh hunter. As long as they have lived in the Altai Mountains, Kazakhs have relied on eagles. However, not all mountain people get help from wild animals. On the edge of Africa's Great Rift Valley, geological upheaval has created Ethiopia's Simeon Mountains. Here, giant cliffs form a natural fortress where for centuries people have sought refuge from conflicts below. Gatorbit Village is one of a hundred perched in a landscape so vertical that the residents can only grow their crops on tiny strips of land along the edges of cliffs. But 700-foot precipices are the least of their worries. Today, their annual harvest is underway and their grain is under attack from a ravenous enemy. These are gelada monkeys, and they love stealing the farmer's grain. Troops of up to 600 prowl the cliffs surrounding Gatorbit village. Led by males with fangs larger than a lion, they are cunning thieves. To defend their crops against the monkeys, the cliff farmers depend on their children, such as 12-year-old Derije. Because the area is next to a national park, the gelada are protected. As night approaches, the geladas stop raiding. But Derage's crops are ripe for harvest, and he knows that tomorrow the monkeys will attack even more aggressively than before. So, with his two sisters and brother, he camps by his fields. At night, temperatures plummet below freezing. 